And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. I love doing that. I like rolling dice. I love dice, hence the name of our show, The Dice Tower. And this game today that I'm talking about, Dice Town, is one of my favorite games I've played thus far in 2009. It's just a lot of fun. It's basically an interactive type of Yahtzee, uh, where you really are interacting with one another, mixed with a bit of poker hands and some backstabbing, and just a lot of fun. It's really entertaining. Let's take a look at how the game's played. Each player is given five dice and a cup. Now these dice are not your normal dice. You can see it has a queen on one side, uh, a nine of spades, a ten of hearts, a king, a jack, and then an ace of spades on the other side. And so those are the six different sides that you have. And at the beginning of each round, players are going to take their five dice, put them in their cup, and roll them. You're then going to look at them secretly without showing them to anyone else, and you get to keep one of those dice. So let's say I decided to keep the jack. Now, you can keep more than one of those dice. For example, let's say I want to keep both jacks. But to do that, for each extra die that you have, you have to pay a dollar to the bank. Now, if I didn't like any of the dice I rolled, I can keep none of them, but then I still have to pay a dollar to the bank. Let's say I want to keep all these dice. I'd have to pay four dollars to the bank. Players start with eight dollars, so eventually they're going to run out of money if they're not careful in how they spend it. So let's say I decide to keep both jacks. My opponent decides to keep both of his tens, and we both roll again. Again, we've spent one dollar each on our dice. He rolls, I roll, I keep one jack. I will re-roll the others. He decides to keep both of these tens, and so again, he has to pay a dollar to do that, and makes his final roll, keeps the jack. I keep the jack. Now, since he finished his dice, I, have, I only have one more roll of my dice, even if I had multiple dice left. And so there we end it. I have four jacks and a queen. He has two pairs and a jack. So now, let's look at the board itself. Basically, on the board, you start from one end and go to the other. We start with the gold mine. Whoever has the most spades, the most nine of spades here, is going to get gold nuggets equal to the number that they have. So in this instance, my opponent has two, I have none, so he would get two gold nuggets. Nuggets are great because they're points at the end of the game. We then move on to the bank. In the bank, whoever has the most of the hearts gets all the money that's in the bank. And then all the money that was paid this turn will move up into the bank for the next turn. Then the next place is the general store. The general store goes to the person who has the most jacks. They're simply going to draw cards from the general store pile equal to the number of jacks they have. So I have four jacks, so I'll look at four different cards, but I only get to keep one of them. Some of these cards are great. They're points. This is eight points, best card in the game, for the end of the game. Other cards give you special abilities that you can use. When you're done with the general store, then we go to the saloon. That's where queens are used. In the saloon, Whoever has the most queens can steal cards from another player. I have one queen. It allows me to steal one card randomly from another player. If there is no other players, well, tough, I mean, who have cards. If, they have, if you roll multiple queens, you can take multiple cards, but you can only keep one. Then whoever has the most kings becomes the sheriff. The sheriff is great. Why? Because at the end of the game, whoever controls the sheriff card, which is right here, gets five points, but also the sheriff breaks ties. So if there's a tie between two players, the sheriff decides who wins, and you can bribe him with whatever you please. Then there's the town hall. This is probably the most important part of the game. In town hall, whoever has rolled the best poker hand wins the bottom land card here. So for example, in our game, in our rolling, I rolled four jacks, so I would get the bottom card. If I had rolled any aces, I would also get one additional card for each ace rolled and the most cards you can get is three. And in this instance, you can see I want to get that because this card's worth one point, but these cards are worth five and, and then four, respectively. And then once these cards are taken, they move down, and more cards come in their stand. Instead, the cards there are from one to five. And then finally, we have Doc Bad Luck. Doc Bad Luck is where you go if 
you get nothing on that turn. Now that won't happen in a, a game with only a few players, but with four or five players, there's a chance, and in fact with five players, there's a good chance that you're going to visit Dr. Bad Luck. Once the round's over, everybody takes up their dice, and they go again. And by the way, let me reiterate, when you go to Dr. Bad Luck, the things there are pretty good. You can take two of your land cards and make them so no one else can steal them. You can steal one gold nugget from everyone else on the table. They're good things. And then you roll dice again, and then you just continue this over and over again until either all the gold nuggets are gone or all the land cards are gone. At that point, whoever has the most points, which is gold nuggets, plus land cards, plus any good cards from the general store, plus points for being the sheriff, is the winner. It's very fast, takes about 45 minutes to play, and a lot of fun. The production on this game is really well done. Uh, the dice themselves are the most interesting facet of the game. I, I suppose they could have done one through six, but having the different faces of the poker cards on them helps give theme to the game and also helps differentiate. It's really easy to tell the queen she's the only one that's green. The jack, the king, and just the different, all the signs have different colors. They're, they're very easy to tell apart. And once you play a few rounds, you know exactly what each one does. Having the cup is a nice idea, too. I mean, it helps you hide your dice, of course, but there's just the fact of shaking that cup and slamming it on the table. I really enjoy it. Although, um, some people who have wooden tables aren't necessarily as keen of you doing that, so I found out. But, the idea then is like Yasi. You can keep one die, or maybe you can keep more, using your money to, to decide which dice to keep and when, and you watch your opponents. Which dice are they keeping? Okay, he kept... Two jacks. Why am I going for jacks? He could easily beat me. Who has the best poker hand? Because that really is that important. But at the same time, it's, there is luck in the game. You're going to roll what you roll sometimes. Sometimes someone rolls better than you. Sometimes you draw the perfect card you need from the general store. And then these general store cards let you do different things. For example, uh, this guy here lets you keep more than one die without having to pay anything. Um, another card... If someone else takes over the sheriff, too bad. I'm staying the sheriff if you have this card. Uh, one player gives you $4. And so there's a lot of interaction. You can get into some kind of a Western theme when playing the game. Uh, utilizing your money is important. And I forgot to mention, every $2 you have at the end of the game is worth a point. But that's not as useful as actually spending it to control your dice. Loads of fun. Everyone I've played with has loved it. It's a real keeper. It reminds us slightly of a game called Liar's Dice, although this one has more theme and I think is more enjoyable. Great game. Try it out. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. 